Penn State football is currently over its scholarship limit. The transfer portal reopens on Monday. That means at the conclusion of the blue-white game, yeah, there's going to be a number of Nittany Lions headed out of Happy Valley. You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Could there be an exodus for Penn State football after the spring season is officially over with the blue-white game? This is Locked On Nittany Lions. I'm your host, Zach Seiko, and thanks so much for making us your first listen and watch every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. And help me welcome him back. That is Dylan Callaghan Crowley on the other side, Penn State Rivals editor, HappyValleyInsider.com, to talk about the final open spring practice that the media are able to go witness. And based on the presser with James Franklin. And just some other observations that we made with Katron Allen, Keandre Lambert-Smith missing, and some other overall takeaways. This was actually a very interesting session, Dylan, and it's important to start with the scholarship count. So Audrey Snyder of The Athletic, one of the best reporters out there, you know, relevant to Penn State, but also, you know, across the country. She does very, very thorough reporting and asked a particular question about, hey, coach, you have too many scholarships right now, and James James doesn't lie when he talks to the media. He doesn't lie, but he'll he'll dance around some questions. He'll he'll avoid them, and he said that you know, hey, our math might be a little different. But he he said that he basically he gave a non answer to Audrey's question about you have a lot of scholarships. What are you going to do about that? What's your plan for the spring transfer portal window? And I just don't think he wanted to give an answer at that point because the portal window hasn't officially opened, but. Based on if you look at happyvalleyinsider.com, Rivals, or any of the other sites, Penn State is at least a dozen scholarships over the 85 limit. So, Dylan, let's put some logic here together. That means that a dozen Penn State football players are going to, at least a dozen, are going to have to enter the transfer portal when the spring window is officially open. Yeah, uh, like you said, at least a dozen. I mean, uh, at Happy Valley Insider, on our unofficial scholarship chart, we have, uh, I think, it at 96. Audrey, uh, I think, had hers at 99, it said. And then I think yeah. one other resource had it around 96 or 97 as well. But either way, like you said, at least a dozen. And uh, if Audrey's count is correct, which it, it may very well be, you're talking then 14 players at least. And that's just to get to the scholarship limit. That's not counting if you want to go into the portal and try to grab you know, uh, someone last minute addition for your roster for the 2024 season. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, I, I, just with the numbers, it points to what's likely going to be somewhat of a mass exodus of a couple, not even a couple, of a, a chunk of the roster here, uh, I guess, coming up in the next few weeks after spring practice. I believe the transfer portal window opens um, what would be next Monday, mm-hmm. two days after the blue-white game. Uh, so it should be interesting. We'll see what happens there. Who enters the transfer portal? Uh, perhaps uh, it, will there be any medical retirements or any guys just decide to hang up the cleats? True. Uh, th- there's a couple ways they can get under this number, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, the the numbers uh, don't lie. They are right now above that 85 scholarship limit, and the only way to get down there is whether that's medical retirement, regular retirement, or – uh, players transfer now. So it's going to be uh, a busy next few weeks or months for Penn State. Notably, they don't have to be under that limit until, you know, uh, mm-hmm. whenever the first game is. I think that's August 28th right now. Yes. Uh, August 28th. Uh, they don't have to be the 85 until then. So there's still plenty of mm-hmm. time till then. But you'd imagine if there are going to be some transfers. It's going to be here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I believe the transfer portal window closes April 30th. So you're looking Mm -hmm. at about 15 days there for guys to enter the portal if they want to land at a new uh, university in time for next fall. So uh, definitely going to be a busy next couple of weeks for Penn State following the the blue-white game. Uh, uh, Even if James says, you know, their numbers are different than ours, uh, to me, I take that as that they just kind of know who they're expecting. Yeah, who they're expecting to enter the portal. 
maybe there'll be a surprise or two, but uh, I, I think they have an idea, at least on their account, of who's not going to be here uh, after the spring. And uh, maybe that's why their numbers are a little different than ours. But uh, at least uh, to the unofficial accounts uh, of our resource uh, and other resources, including Audrey, they're, they're over right now. And uh, yeah, like you said, it's coming. And that's and that's just a that's a low ballpark figure. What if yeah. Penn State sees a player in the transfer portal? Like, let's take a Barry Alexander, for example, sure. who transferred from Georgia to USC, is back in the portal, and Penn State was recruiting him the last time around. I yeah. think there's uh, there, there's NIL circumstances that probably don't bring him to Happy Valley. But say there's another player of that caliber that fits a need with Penn State, and what does that mean? Again, you have to get to 85. So if Penn State wants to take another player, an additional player from the transfer portal. That means that somebody on the roster also has to leave. And, and I know what everybody's thinking. Okay, well, who's going to go? Katron Allen's missing. Keandre Lambert-Smith's missing. Stay tuned with us for the second segment. We'll, we'll provide some updates there. But you look at the roster, Dylan, and, and it's where Penn State can trim excess, excess spots, right? There's a lot of wide receivers. There There's. are a lot of wide receivers on the roster. It might be, it might be where is it too crowded? Special teams? defensive line right players yeah. that you you just have to look for players that just haven't in in two to three years time just haven't you know, haven't haven't been able to carve out a spot on this yeah. Penn State roster I mean first I, I think we all can agree the running back room is there's a lot of bodies in there but at the same time that's a position group in which Penn State is more than yeah, you need, have, you need a, a, as many bodies as possible so yeah, yeah a lot of scholarships there but that's really not a, a worry necessarily for Penn State at running back. Um, wide receiver, like you mentioned, there's a lot of bodies in that a room. And, and that's in a room where it just hasn't been producing uh, really the last two years right. beyond. Um, even we go two years ago, it was Parker Washington, it was Mitchell Tinsley, and it was Calendry Lambert-Smith. Last year it was mostly Calendry Lambert-Smith for – 75% mm -hmm. of the season until the last four games of the season. And then he mm -hmm. uh, disappeared. He was having a solid spring mispractice yesterday. Like you said, we'll have more on that uh, in our next segment. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's plenty of guys in that room who haven't seen the field yet. And I question if they're going to see the field in the future. So yeah. I wouldn't be shocked if we see a departure or two uh, from that room, maybe more um, because you, yeah. you still need depth in that room, obviously, but Mm -hmm. uh, th th I know I think this is how you've taken it and how I've taken it. James Franklin has spoken well of the wide receiver room throughout the spring, but for the most he's part, yeah, he's also said that you know he's still looking for those guys to separate themselves. Yes, um, that's been kind of the ongoing theme for the wide receiver room for the last year, basically is that there's dudes in there, but who's going to separate themselves. Um, so uh, I think we can see some parches there. Um, tight end. I there's that room is just so full of talent. I, I could see, maybe I could maybe. see maybe a guy uh, decided to move on there. And then I, I look at, you know, there's a lot of guys in that secondary, but the secondary, they're going to rotate a ton of guys in there. I think they feel yes. good about all of them. Maybe Absolutely. there's one player out of the secondary who decides to leave. Uh, and then, you know, within the front seven, I could see a departure or two. Uh, no, not any specific names off the top of my head, but definitely quite a bit of bodies at both linebacker and defensive line of players who have maybe been around the pro program mm -hmm. now for a couple of years and just haven't taken that step in the development. Maybe could have better luck elsewhere in terms of seeing more playing time. I mean, we already saw Jordan Vandenberg leave this offseason, and I think we all right. agree Jordan Vandenberg's very solid player. Um, Everybody seemed to think he was, you know, going in the right direction last season. But Penn State returns their top four defensive tackles this year. A role for Jordan Vandenberg that looked like it was going to be bigger in 2024 kind of stays the same. Yes. In that way, it, it would probably better for Vandenberg to look elsewhere to play mm -hmm. in the rest of his college career. Uh, and that place became Georgia Tech. Um, so, I, and, I, and, I, and then special teams, I think, is interesting. Um, yeah. I, you know, I hate to single out names, but Sandra Sahedak is that one name that I is a mm. really interesting name to watch this spring, just because yeah. scholarship kicker coming out of high school, 
was one of the top rated high school kickers in the country when he signed with Penn State. Right. And so far in his career, he just hasn't been able to put together. They lose Alex Falcons, you know, to eligibility this offseason, but they go back in the portal and get Chase Myers, albeit a walk on. Yes. But they get Chase Myers, who had a very good uh season last year at Tulsa to come in and compete with Falcons. So I mean, yes. depending on how that race goes, you, I, I can see that being something to watch, especially because they have another walk on, a younger walk on. Ryan Barker, uh, who's a yes. punter slash kicker, who's also, you know, received some very good uh, praise from the coaching staff uh, during his time on campus so far. So I think that's another one to watch as well. I'll, I'll finish with this about the transfer portal. Everybody think it's so great. All oh, player mobility, flexibility. They get to pick and choose where they want to play. This is also the easiest way for college football programs to revoke scholarships and tell you to get lost if they don't want you anymore. They are allowed to cut you. This is the easiest way to do it. So the transfer portal has some good, but there's also a bad, ugly side to it as well. Now coming up, Katron Allen, Keandre Lambert-Smith. I was at practice on, on Tuesday, and I didn't notice a couple of key players for Penn State. James Franklin also talked about Jackson Smollett's injury. We're going to discuss that coming up next here on Locked On Nittany Lions. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, the official sports book of Locked On. It's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL, and baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is the place to bet on each and every game. Right now, new customers will get $150 in bonus bets. That's right, $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. What are you waiting for? All you got to do is visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. That is FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. That's FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day long? Do you ever have to turn down the volume with all of that shouting? How about you make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you to bring you the biggest stories without all of that screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube and now on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team each and every day. Let's get back to it. Keandre Lambert-Smith and Katron Allen were noticeably absent in addition to what we've seen for the past few weeks, Jackson Smolik. Then there was the report of the long-term injury. James Franklin officially confirmed it without providing too much detail. But there was no context provided to Keandre Lambert-Smith and Katron Allen being absent from practice. Dylan, we just got finished talking about how there are too many scholarship players on the team and that at least a dozen have to go into the transfer portal. I am not trying to imply anything, so let's clarify this. Let's begin with Katron Allen, since he is that, you know, that one-two punch with Nicholas Singleton and arguably a, an MVP caliber player on the offense. Is everything all right with Katron? What do we know? Yeah, I haven't heard too many specifics on Katron, uh, but usually, you know, when things go on the more serious side of things, I usually tend to hear about those when it's more mm -hmm. bumps or bruises. Short-term injuries, I, I don't usually get as much insight. Uh, so I think the less news here with Katron Allen, it means good news. Uh, gotcha. Uh, you know, he's missed, I think, uh, this week, and I think he missed last week uh, yeah. at least. Um, so back-to-back -back practices. They got a few more here before the blue-white game and then the blue-white game. I would be shocked if we don't see him in Saturday's game just because he wasn't going to play a big role to begin with. Uh, right. None of the starters really were going to to begin with. So uh, I wouldn't be shocked if we don't see him at all. But – um, I don't think there's anything to worry about with Katron Allen, short term mm -hmm. or long term uh, going forward. Uh, I, I'm going to guess this is just kind of a little bit of bumps and bruises uh, for Katron. And now James Franklin did admit that he talked about how this was one of the most physical spring practice sessions that not just the the individual session, but just overall this spring season has been more physical. There's an intensity to it. You know, what is Andy Kotelnicki and Tom Allen, their kind of styles of coaching. It's just every we, we heard positives that there was just more competition 
and physicality. Right. So, so now what does that mean for Keandre Lambert Smith? So good to know that Katron Allen is fine for the future. We know that Jackson Smollett had, there's a, an obvious long-term injury here from what we know. Keandre Lambert Smith missing at practice, even though he was there the entire time. And then this one, he is conveniently not present. What does that mean? Yeah, so uh, we actually over at Happy Valley Insider posted yesterday a little bit of a note and a rumor on uh, okay. DeAndre Lambert Smith of what what that situation is. Um, uh, I I do usually come on and give a lot of intel. Uh, so, for, but this one I'm going to actually point. What do uh, we know? What do we know? Uh, w- what we do know is Katron, uh Katron, Keandre was obviously not a practice. Um, mm-hmm. I, I've heard some. Uh, different things about what his availability is going to be going forward. Uh, okay. Saturday, I am not necessarily expecting him to play on Saturday. If he does, I wouldn't be uh, surprised, uh, but it's going to be something that I, I think is worth watching over the next uh, few days uh, and potentially weeks, uh, depending on how things go here. Uh, it, it's a, uh, it's an interesting situation to say the least, but there's going to be more, I'm assuming uh, that we're, that we'll learn over at Happy Valley Insider uh, over the next couple of days and weeks. So go over to Happy Valley Insider, PennState.Rivals.com, uh, and we'll uh, follow along there, and we'll we'll see how that uh, plays out here over uh, the the future. Um, nothing uh, certain. I haven't heard you know I haven't heard anything like mm-hmm. concrete on him. Uh, just rumors and stuff that we, we've heard, and uh, we like to pass on those rumors that we hear. <laughs> Um, so some of them we like to confirm before we go hand with sometimes yeah. we hear it from a source that we're, we consider reliable. Uh, we, mm-hmm. uh, do like to share it. So, uh, nothing concrete there just yet. Uh, some murmurs here and there though. Uh, so go over to have value inside Penn State, Penn State.rivals.com to check that out. Dylan, let's put a, you know, two and two together here. It does not surprise me in the slightest if Keandre Lambert Smith does in fact enter the transfer portal is if this is what we're getting at here, regardless of the reason, right? But if you look at the timeline, Keandre Lambert Smith went from the number one wide receiver in a Mike Yersich led offense to progressively being phased out, even with Mike Yersich calling plays, absolutely disappeared in the Ohio State game and the Michigan game. And then at the end of the season, when J1 Sider, Ty Howler calling plays, really still nowhere to be found. And then similar circumstances in the bowl game. How do you get that fall from, I won't call it a fall from grace because Keandre Lambert Smith had an okay season as a number one wide receiver clearly showed that that role was too big for him, but to go from a number one to essentially what the number three in 2024, you have a new offensive coordinator in that as well. So you're not working with that similar element of the coaching staff. And we just talked about how there are too many wide receivers on the roster and there is a scholarship limit. So it, it does not surprise me in the slightest if KLS is, in fact, one of those players in the transfer portal come Monday for the spring window. Yeah, if that's how things play out here, that is – I mean, I'll be honest, in the spring – in the in the offseason, um, back fall and end of the season, uh, mm-hmm. you know, as, as journalists on these type of sites tend to do, uh, we pre-write news articles of things that we think could happen or expect to happen. And one of those okay. that we did have pre-written in the offseason was the idea of, you know, County Lambert Smith potentially entering the transfer portal. And for a while in the offseason, I thought that's how thing, it was going to progress that way. It's just, you know, uh, Keandre over his Penn State career has been what he has been, which is a very good wide receiver, but – there's also been some inconsistencies on and off the field. I think mm-hmm. uh, there's been, you know, some worries from the coaching staff uh, to that degree. But um, Keandre is, you know, stuck around, and uh, we'll, yep. we'll see how things go out from here. But yeah, I mean, it, it, at the beginning of the off season, if you told me that Lambert Smith entered the transfer portal this off season, I, I wouldn't have been uh, too surprised. I did. <laughs> <laughs> you did fit. And I, I wasn't too surprised when he returned. Um, now I'm not, I, I'm not saying that that's our, like we haven't heard anything concrete about him and the transfer portal uh, right. over at Happy Valley Insider, but uh, there's definitely uh, a lot of stuff out there uh, regarding him, different things out there. And, and we discussed uh, all those different possibilities over at Happy Valley Insider. Um, but yeah, it, I, I would say, 
it wouldn't be shocking again just because what we have seen over the last four years mm -hmm. has kind of led to a point where it, it just it just wouldn't be based off his past performance based off on and off the field stuff that you know we've heard we've talked about before uh, i mean um i i think the overall leadership in that room lacked yeah. last year i don't think that's a secret to anybody mm -hmm. um so i yeah i wouldn't be surprised if it does end up that way um but again nothing concrete so far there's just when you move to the slot wide receiver position and Amari Evans could factor in there. There's Liam Clifford right there. Caden Saunders for crying out loud. DeAndre Lambert Smith with Julian Fleming comes in, becomes your number one. Trey Wallace is supposed to be your number two. That means that KLS moves to the slot and there's just a lot of competition there. Uh, who knows how that shakes out, but it's just the situation just isn't as good for KLS as it was a year ago when the roster, the offense was completely different in 2023. Yeah. And it's interesting too because this was this uh, Keandre, uh, depending on what happens here, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, James Franklin was speaking very highly of Keandre just uh, last week, saying, "Yeah, showing some flashes, was, showing yeah. some flashes." Drew has been speaking highly of Keandre, so uh, we'll, we'll see things how things shake out. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it would it wouldn't be something that shocks me, and it wouldn't be something that I, right. I would be shocked no matter where. Kondre Lambert Smith is playing football next year, um, but um, if this is an injury thing, I have not heard uh, anything mm -hmm. in terms of you know uh, that. Again, I usually don't hear if it's usually banged up, uh, you know, mm -hmm. bruises and stuff like that. Um, if it's more serious, I usually hear about it. Uh, but I haven't heard anything on the injury front. I haven't heard anything concrete on the transfer portal front. But uh, anything we have heard about Keandre over the last. Uh, 24 hours uh we have over at happy valley insider uh, i think uh we started posting that about seven o'clock last night about what mm -hmm. uh the different things we we're hearing so uh people go over to there pensay.rose.com like i said sign up with a free 30-day trial hvi 30 uh and and check out uh all the intel we got and anything we continue to hear we'll be sure to post over there first ones to talk about it when it came to kls and when there's smoke there's fire as the saying goes we'll finish up with some final open media spring practice takeaways james franklin again is honest with the media about his assessments so cooper cousins received some high praise for example some final takeaways coming up next here on locked on nittany lions today's episode is brought to you by game time you got to download the game time app because buying tickets to your favorite events should not be stressful and now Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. And prices on the Game Time app actually go down closer as it gets to first pitch. Now, I've used the Game Time app before. I bought tickets to baseball games. I bought tickets to Penn State games with Game Time. Game Time has a lot of incredible features. First, the last minute deals. So game time is always trying to find you ways to save money on your tickets. Well, you get last minute deals. You can save up to 60% on buying tickets for last minute events for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, everything near you. And then there's flash deals on top of some of those discounts. Save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time to all of your favorite events. Got to download the Game Time app, create an account and use promo code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create that account, redeem code Locked On College for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guarantee. And remember, if you're not already, become an everyday or subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lions on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts for the latest conversations around your favorite Penn State sports teams. I want to thank each and every one of you for helping grow this YouTube channel to 4,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for being a part of these conversations. And remember, you can keep up with Dylan over at happyvalleyinsider.com. And in this final segment, just to wrap up, takeaways from the final open media spring practice. Cooper Cousins has received a lot of praise, a lot of notice, and, and rightly so. Uh, between his versatility, he can play tackle, he can play guard, he can play center. Dylan, I'm, I'm looking for your thoughts there because I think Cooper Cousins does play a lot. I, I want to go back to the fact that James Franklin and, and Terry Smith, associate head coach, you know, defensive recruiting uh, coordinator, 
and you know run it and runs the show with the cornerbacks. He said that this was the best spring, one of the best spring seasons in his 11 years at Penn State. Mm -hmm. So I, I know there was all the hype around the 2023 team, and they 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 weren't they weren't a bad team. They finished 10 and two, and they lost by single digits to Ohio yeah. State and Michigan. So they were that close. Yeah. I do think my, my final takeaway just from listening to what Coach Franklin said, Coach Smith, is that this team is in fact better in 2024 than they are in 2023, but can they make it through this gauntlet of a yeah. schedule? Yeah. Yeah. I, and I think that's a very fair question. I mean, this, I think on paper, this Penn state team absolutely has a chance to be better. Wide receiver yeah. is a, obviously a big question mark and maybe the deciding factor between what this team actually is or is not. Um, how is somebody like a Julian Fleming going to come in and impact uh, the passing mm -hmm. game in 2024. Um, Keandre Lambert Smith, um, uh, if he remains at Penn State, because I think like we just alluded to in our last segment, um, mm -hmm. the, the the possibility of Keandre Lambert Smith being with or with not with the program come 2024 was always in question, whether it was uh, before the start of spring practice or after spring practice. I mean, it's just how college football is in today's game. Um, a little slightly off topic, but Oregon State just saw Damian Martinez, yeah. their top running back, leave the program yesterday. Um, after he said, after he was one of the first players following the de following the departure of Johnson Smith to Michigan State uh, to reaffirm his commitment to the program, and now he's gone. Uh, he was set to make four hundred thousand dollars in NIL. Yes. By the way, yes, he uh, was. That was it, reported. Yep, and that's a Pac two program. Um, so. Um, <laughs> It's a pack just a little, program. Just a little NIL out there. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, with with the transfer portal in today's game, the way college football is going these days and just kind of the Con Conjure Lambert-Smith situation as a whole over the last year, nobody would be shocked whether he's here or he's not. It just yeah. depends how things play out. If he is with Penn State next fall, what is he going to be able to do? Beyond Conjure Lambert-Smith, mm -hmm. whether he's here or not, Who's that number three guy for Penn State? Or if he's not here, who's that number two guy for Penn State? That's mm. there's a lot of questions in that wide receiver yep. room. Um, but beyond that, I really feel good about this Penn State team and their potential in 2024. I think James Franklin, you know, has a very good reason to feel about feel those feel the way he does about this team. Uh the offense should take a step up. The defense probably can't really take any step up from being the best in the country last year, but they're yep. gonna be very good once again. But like mm -hmm. you said, can they run through this gauntlet of a schedule? September, they should. West Virginia is a talented team. They should still mm -hmm. go into yes. Morgantown in August and beat West Virginia by at least two scores, in my opinion. At least. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. They should do that. But once you get into October, uh, once you have to face the likes of you know UCLA, USC, uh, who, uh, Wisconsin, Ohio State, Washington, uh, back, Washington, all back to back yeah. to back to back. That five-game stretch, uh, I yes. think I butchered a little bit of the order, but right. um, that five-game stretch, that's going to decide what type of heat James Franklin is is going to have heading into next offseason. Mm -hmm. If Penn State can go 10-2 and two next year, that should be good enough to get to the playoffs. And if you get to the playoffs, you have a chance. I think Penn State could win a playoff game without a doubt next year, but you have to get to the playoffs. If Penn State yep. can't get to the playoffs next year, I think we're going to have a lot of interesting next, uh, interesting conversations next offseason, um, you know, about Penn State's future as a whole. Not necessarily saying you know it's make or break for James Franklin, but I do wonder in for James Franklin, it just at what point does he as a coach say mm -hmm. maybe if I do go somewhere, I have a better chance of doing, you know, get into a national championship or you know James yeah. Franklin has been very vocal mm. in the past about uh, or has been very vocal at least to recruits and others about that his goal is to be like his big dream goal is to be the first African American head coach to win uh, a national championship. Okay. Um it, it, does he think like that could still be done at Penn State if it you know if it doesn't if they don't make the playoffs this year. It's just I, I think there's a lot of interesting conversations that could be made wow. uh, about that. Um I I'm not saying he's going to leave Penn State. I'm not saying Penn State's going to fire him, yeah. but it, you know, just after this year, it'll be what year? This is a year eleven for James Franklin. 
Yes. Uh, it just it's one of those conversations I think you have after you know after time. It, it it sounds crazy, but at the same time, we just saw John Calipari leave Kentucky for Arkansas. A lateral move, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, so it, uh, in today's college football world, nothing is surprising anymore. And I, I think every conversation is on the table. Um, and I'm not yeah. trying to stir the pot or anything there. But, yeah, like oh. you said, it, it, it's going to – can they run through the gauntlet? Um, and I think them being having a physical spring, having more depth this spring is going to pay off for them in the fall. Um, I, I think for now it's just can they stay healthy? No. Um, and like we said, there's going to be a max mass exodus in the transfer portal. How do you keep those guys that are going to be important for you on this team? Is everybody happy with NIL? Uh, th- that's going to be maybe the big challenge going forward. Uh, well, it's definitely going to be the big challenge going forward in 2025 mm-hmm. and beyond is keeping everybody happy from a monetary standpoint. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, there's always rumblings of who's unhappy, who's not. Uh, so it, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But I think there's a lot of reason to be optimistic about Penn State going forward into the season. As long as, you know, Drew stays healthy, as long as the running backs yeah. stay healthy and the defense st- keeps its main pieces, uh, I, I think this team is definitely going to be competing for uh, a college football playoff. Will they be competing for the Big Ten championship? That's going to be tough. Ohio mm-hmm. State is incredibly talented this year. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I think definitely there's a lot of reasons to be optimistic about this team going forward. Uh, but, again, it's going to come down to that. I think that wide receiver room. That will all that will be the ultimate make or break. Quickly, because I did mention it at the top of the segment, so he certainly deserves some more recognition here. Cooper Cousins. Yeah. At some point in the season, I think he starts. Whether that's by just talent alone, that he overtakes somebody at the center spot, the guard spot, one of the guard spots, one of the tackle spots. I do think Cooper Cousins is that good, but there's the learning curve that James Franklin made apparent about who just naturally with Cooper Cousins being a true freshman, but he came in with college football ready weight, college football ready size, six foot five, 330 pounds. He's, he can play center guard tackle. At some point, Cooper Cousins, as a true freshman, will have his red shirt burned and he's going to start on that offensive line, whether that's by game four or some somewhere down the road, game eight. Yeah, no, I, I've been on record saying I think Cooper Cousins may have the high, single highest floor of any prospect in this 2024 recruiting class. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he has the chance to be um a rare three and done you know offensive lineman he, he yeah. is that he is that talented um i would not be surprised at all if he is somebody who is starting uh at some point in 2024 uh whether that's at center or guard whether it's due to talent or injury like you said i think there's a good chance we see him i would almost be shocked if his red shirt isn't burned uh this mm-hmm. year um it's just yeah. he, he's that talented uh, he was taking snaps at center this year, uh, this spring. I mean, um, he was taking first string snaps. Uh, it looked like at times throughout the spring as well, you know, snapping the drew, which, um, you know, you don't want to read too much into spring practices, especially 15 minutes that we get. But, um, if they didn't think he was good, they wouldn't be, you know, wasting right. those snaps. Um, so, uh, I think there's definitely a lot of, excitement around Cooper Cousins inside the Lash building. I think there should be a lot of excitement for Penn State fans about what he could be uh, because I I think, like I said, I think he's got the highest floor of any 2024 prospect, and he may have the highest ceiling of any prospect too. He he is that good, and like I said, uh, could be a rare three-and-done offensive lineman. That's high expectations, I know, but yeah, I think we're going to see him a lot this uh, fall. Thanks for checking out this episode of Locked On Nittany Lions. Let us know down in the comments section your final, based on all the intel that we have, your final takeaways from spring football practices. Blue-white game coming up on Saturday, April 13th. If you want to keep up with Dylan's work, check it out over at happyvalleyinsider.com. You can follow him on X as well. Dylan, thanks so much for the time, and we're going to have a quick turnaround as we got to preview that blue-white game for the 2024 spring season. So thanks again for the time as always and looking forward to our next discussion here, which is going to be right behind this one. Once again, thanks for checking out this episode of Locked On Nittany Lions. Remember to like and subscribe and let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And don't forget, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and now it's available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows 
covering each and every league. You can find Locked On Sports Today now available on YouTube and on the free Fire TV channels app. 